Jay White, the authentic entrepreneur, coming at your real, coming at your raw, and coming at your <laughs> relevant. And this, my friends, is the business breakthrough. Today, we're going to be talking about marketing and products, but specifically, we're going to be laying down this idea of spam. Now, I don't know how this goes. Maybe I'm too young to have ever experienced this, but there was actually people who had spam sandwiches, like my father, for example. Now, my father does a lot of crazy things, like has spam, and also, he also had a mayonnaise and peanut butter sandwich. Now, I often ask my father, did you have mayonnaise and peanut butter sandwiches as well as spam simply because your house couldn't afford anything else besides that? I mean, who eats spam on sandwich and who also eats peanut butter and mayonnaise, for crying out loud? Anyways, that to the side. We're gonna talk about a different form of spam today. Not spam in the form of food, but spam in the form of giving people crap they don't want. That's a simply defined definition of spam in my book. My book is giving people information they don't want, want, want. Putting things in front of their face they don't want, want. This is spam. Now the other side of this is what we call permission. Now Seth Godin, again, one of my great mentors in the world of marketing and many others have taught this principle of permission-based marketing forever. Well, what is permission, right? Well, let's use this as an example of dating. I go to a dorm of women, right? I'm in college and I decide it's time for me to date and I want to find someone to, well, mate with or connect with or whatever the game is that you're looking for. Anyways, I go to the dorms and I'm going to knock and I could go to every single door and I could do the following. Hello, my name is Garrett White, the authentic entrepreneur, and I was wondering if you'd like to go on a date with me. All right, so you suck. Boom. Next one. And I could do this through every single apartment in the entire complex. The other thing I could do is I could go out and I could stand by the swimming pool. And I could allow those women who thought this was a guy they'd like to hang out with to come hang out with me. Now, I totally get this was probably the worst example you've ever heard in the world of permission-based marketing, but it was my best effort, at least for today. So permission-based marketing and spam-based marketing are two very different conversations. And today, we only want to look at the information that we've been given because we requested it. It's like stuff that shows up in your mailbox. You're like, how the hell did you get my address, seriously? And how was it when I moved like three houses away, you seem to find my address again? How is it those same people who always are harassing you seem to always seem to find you even though you've moved forward times. Well, we call that spamming. And how do you respond to spam? You don't want it. Now, maybe you don't get angry like that, but maybe you sit in a situation more like, you're like, are you kidding me? What a waste of freaking money for you to send me that crap in the mail. It's like the big, huge packet of coupons you always seem to get. Now, they obviously work and somebody's looking at that crap because it keeps showing up in my mailbox and it's been showing up in my mailbox for like 10 years now. Now, deep breath, woosah, continue over. So spam itself is any time that I'm marketing information to other people who have not requested it. Online, you're gonna notice that permission-based marketing is crucial. Offline, it's crucial too. When you chase other people who don't want your information, guess what they call you? They call you a stalker. And stalkers get restraining orders. Now, if you're a marketer and marketing your information, whether your information or your product means anything, do you want a restraining order against you? No, 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 I don't think so, okay? So stop doing it online and doing it offline. So the key then is to figure out how do I build spaces and places for people to get permission to want to look at my content? For example, this, I didn't show up on your door and tell you how to hit this. I didn't even email you that this show even existed. Somebody referred this like on Facebook or some other way in which you opted in and you decided to come show yourself and so you could see me. So the space then of opting in or giving people permission allows for you to say, hey, I've got some products and services I'd like to share with you. So when you look at your business and you look at your model, is your current marketing model based on spam or is your current marketing model based on opt-in permission? Which is, are the people who are getting the information from you or requesting your information or have you just decided to pull everybody up, put a cut and paste and throw it in your Gmail and then like the other retards, you put it and CC instead of BCC and so everybody in the whole world sees emails. Next thing you know, I'm getting emails from somebody else that I didn't really want to get emails from and I'm getting spam because you're a knucklehead and don't know how to use your email. <sighs> I totally get it. So the game is figure out what is the permission-based model that you're using. How are people opting in online and offline into your world? We'd love your comments on that down below. Use some of the strategies and techniques you're using. We'll be sharing with you also some of the techniques we're using here at the Pay to Play Academy and with Garrett J. White, the authentic entrepreneur, to create permission-based marketing funnels. This is Garrett J. White. I am the authentic entrepreneur, and this has been The Business Breakthrough.